What's up guys, it's Trim here again. I'm sorry this video is taking me so long. Going forward, I'll probably only do one or two a week. Um, I don't know if any of you guys are even interested, but anyway, I'm just making this video because I couldn't really find a good one online out there, so hopefully this will at least help a little bit. So we're going to go through um, the Altergeist deck profile. It is one of the more degenerate decks on the ladder that you will see, but it is very, very strong. Um, so, this is my Altergeist deck profile. Let me know if you guys don't agree with something I have in here or think I should add something, um, particularly to the extra deck, because the extra deck definitely needs some work. I wasn't really sure what to add because a lot of the better cards aren't in the game, so. All right, here we go. First, we have Altergeist Konkuri. Um, the ability for this card is basically that if there is another Altergeist monster on the field and it gets targeted for an attack, you can uh, special summon this card from your hand in defense mode and block the attack. Um, so it blocks the attack of one monster on the field, so it's pretty good. Good defensive card. Next we have Altergeist Marionetter. We're going to run three copies of that. Um, basically, its abilities are, one, when you summon it to the field, when you normal summon it. You can set an Altergeist trap directly from your deck to your spell and trap zone. Um, so that is very beneficial in setting up your eventual endgame board. <laughs> and we are going to run three copies, just because we also do run Pot of Desires, and we still want to see this card even after we banish things. Next one we're going to talk about... Actually, um, it has a secondary ability too. So its secondary ability is that if it does go from the field to the graveyard, um, you can special summon um, another monster from your graveyard. So basically it trades the place of that monster. So this card goes to the graveyard and then you special summon the, uh, the other Altergeist monster in your graveyard. It's so they trade places. Sorry, now we're going to talk about Moloseek. So Moloseek... It's a pretty weak card on its own, but you don't take it for the damage, you take it for its ability. Um, so there are a couple ways you can use this card. Moloseek, its first ability is that if you want to just pop some cards in the field, you can summon it, you can attack your opponent directly, and if it does any battle damage, you can destroy any card on the field. So that alone is pretty good. Um, its next ability is that when it goes to the graveyard, you can search out an Aldergeist monster from your deck and add it to your hand, and a lot of the times that's what I will use this ability for. So that's a very good ability, I mean, either either way, both abilities are good. Um, so Moloseek, you want to run at three copies. Um, next we're going to talk about is Multifaker. This card recently got, well I guess not recently, but it is limited to one. So you run one in your deck. This is typically what you're going to search out with Moloseek's ability. You want this card in your hand. Um, basically his ability is that if a trap card is activated, during the turn that that card is activated, you can special summon this card, and then you can activate his ability, which is to special summon another card, um, from your deck, in defense position. So what you would want to special summon is going to be our next, the next card we're going to talk about, Altergeist Silquidos. Silquidos is honestly one of the more broken cards in this deck. I think... If any card should have been limited, it shouldn't have been Multifaker, it should have been Silquidos. But basically his ability is that you can bounce cards back to the opponent's hand. Um, so basically, you send the Altergeist card um, face up, any card on the field, um, to your hand. And that allows you to return any card that they've just played to their hand. Um, obviously it's not the most beneficial with like spells and traps because they'll just set them again. Um, so you'd want to do it as soon as they like normal summon a monster, and then you send it back to their hand. That just completely gets rid of their normal summon. It's pretty broken. Very, very good card. So what I will do is I will use this card in combination with like either Multifaker to send Multifaker back to my hand, so we get those shenanigans going on where I'll activate another trap and then we'll start Multifaker's ability all over again and we'll just get our board set up. Or what I'll do is I will use it in combination with Altergeist Protocol, send Protocol back to my hand, and then we'll bounce one of their cards. Um, so it's very... Silquidos is very, very good. You know, next, 
Ash Blossom Joy of Spring, very standard. Um, we've talked about this card before, so I'm not going to go over it too much. Um, just pan traps that negate, so very general hand trap. Uh, Pot of Desires lets you banish 10 cards from the top of your deck face down, lets you draw 2 cards. So it doesn't really matter what you banish, but you want to make sure that you have a Soquitos and you want to make sure that you have a Multi Faker before you use this ability. Um, if you banish both your Soquitos and your Multi, or, and, or like your Multi Faker or all of the above, you're going to be in a really, really rough position. So you want your Multi Faker and you want a Soquitos before you use this card. Um, Pot of Duality, pretty standard. Um, everybody knows this card. So you can excavate the top three cards of your deck and then add one of them to your hand. You can only use it once per turn, and you can't special summon during the turn you use this card. So use it kind of towards the end if you need to special summon. Now, Secret Village of the Spellcasters. I was running Imperial Order, um, which basically lets you pay 700 life points every turn to prevent the activation of spell cards. Um, and since you can see in this deck we don't run a whole lot of spell cards, it really benefits us. But I think Secret Village of the Spellcasters is, is honestly an upgraded version of that card for this deck. Um, so basically if you control a spellcaster, your opponent can't activate spell cards, but you still can. So it doesn't block you unlike Imperial Order. And all your Altergeist cards, as you can see, they're all spellcasters. So if you have any Altergeist card up and you use this, you can prevent your opponent from activating spell cards. So that's very, very good. They won't be able to activate Twin Twisters and shit to get rid of your Altergeist cards, um, your Altergeist traps. Um, next we have Super Polymerization. Um, just a good disruption card. As you're going to see, this deck is all about disruption, so the Super Polymerization fits right in. Unfortunately, this deck isn't as good as it is in real life, just due to not having three Super Polys and, you know, Pot of Extravagance and that kind of thing. But it works well enough um, for the game. So next we're going to do Altergeist Manifestation. It's basically a monster reborn, or I guess called by the Haunted, for um, for Altergeist cards. Um, the difference is that when this card leaves the field, um, you basically can target another Altergeist trap in your hand and add it to your... Uh, or Altergeist trap in your graveyard and add it to your hand, excuse me. Um, most people will only run this at one because you can get some shenanigans going where you can basically just keep bouncing this card back to your hand, keep getting it out. Um, I run it at two just because the ban list for this game, there's nothing else really I would consider. So, um, Altergeist Protocol, this is a card that you want to see um, because it's basically a negate. So, and if they activate the effects of... Um, really any card, you can activate this card, negate whatever they have, it also prevents the activation, or it also prevents them from negating the activation of your um, cards. Um, sorry, this only works on monsters when they activate their ability, you can negate those, it doesn't work on spells traps. Um, but basically, um, it also prevents your Altergeist cards from being negated. So like, if you have this up, they can't use negates on your cards. So it's pretty good. Um, sometimes if I have both of these up, um, to use the negate you have to destroy an Altergeist card. If I don't have anything disposable and I have both of these, sometimes I'll just use it on the other protocol. Um, it's in the other protocol because that way I still have one. Um, and that way I don't have to get rid of one of my Altergeist monsters that I really don't want to get rid of. Um, so next we have Compulsory Evacuation Device. Just pretty much the same thing as Silquidos. Um, just lets you bounce cards back to the hand. Um, good for getting rid of those pesky normal summons. Um, you have your going second card evenly matched here. Um, if you do have to go second, evenly matched is very good. Forces your opponent to banish cards until they have the same number of cards you do, and they are banished face down. Um, because we don't run a lot of back row removal with this deck, I am running two heavy storm dusters that will take care of the back row. Um, very good for that. Next we have Infinite Impermanence, pretty standard. Um, it's kind of like Ash Blossom in that it negates abilities, but this will negate any ability. Um, and if it was set, then it will negate the abilities of any cards or any uh, spells or traps that are in the same column as this. 
Um, so you run three copies of Impermanence. Very good. Another ability negate, Lost Wind. You can target one special summon monster in the field, negate its ability, and you half its attack. Um, the interesting thing about this card is that when it negates and it halves the opponent's monster's attack, it is pretty much permanent until that card leaves the field. It's not like it, do it doesn't go back to normal at the end of the turn. Um, so Lost Wind is pretty good. Um, also, when this card is in the graveyard, um, except for during the damage step, you can activate its ability from the grave to set this card again, so you can use it again, but then after that it gets banished the second time. So it's like you run it's, you run two copies, but it essentially you can use it four times, so pretty damn good. Personal spoofing. Um, this is a card that you want to see. You want personal spoofing up, probably even before you use Pot of Desires. Um, because it will allow you to protect your cards, it will allow you to change your hand, but basically you can shuffle one Altergeist card from your hand or face up on your field into your deck and then add one Altergeist monster from your deck to your hand. So basically if I have this up and let's say I have, you know, Multifaker up, um, I don't want Multifaker to die, so I will, and, you know, they attack him, so I will use Personal Spoofing, send Multifaker back to my deck and then draw Multifaker again to add it to my hand. So that's one way you can use it, or like, you know, let's say you use Silquidos and you bounced one of their cards and they, uh, all you have on the field is your Silquidos and you don't want it to die, and you don't have, like, Kunkuri to defend yourself, you can use Personal Spoofing, send Silquidos, uh, sorry for the drift, you know, switch controllers, um, you can send Silquidos back to your hand, um, and that will, yeah, you'll take some life point damage, but you'll protect your card. So, very good. Um, pretty standard. I would run three copies of this if I could, but this game and its ban list only lets you run one. So, we, you know, Solemn Judgment, standard negate for anything, pay half your life points to do that, and then if you do, you destroy the card. So, in its place, I would run, I run two Solemn Strikes. Um, so, when a monster is special summoned or when a monster effect is activated, pay 1500 life points, negate the ability, and then destroy the card. Um, just because I can't run three judgments, we're going to run two strikes. And then Solemn Warning. Um, I would actually run more than this if I could. I'm pretty sure it's limited. Um, so when a spell trap is activated or when a monster is summoned, um, that includes an effect that special summons a monster, you pay 2,000 life points, negate the special summon, and if you do, you destroy it. Um, Torrential Tribute. Um, this pretty standard card that just it's kind of like a dark hole destroys everything on the field destroys all monsters um, so as you can see this deck is very very focused around disrupting your enemy it is very very annoying to deal with the downside to this deck is it's sort of like a death by a thousand cuts deck like as you can see none of your monsters are particularly very strong so it's gonna take some time to whittle their life points down to zero um, Anyway, for your extra deck, we are going to start out with your Super Polymerization Target, your Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Um, very good card, copies abilities. Um, so yeah, your this is your boss monster for the deck, Altergeist Hexia. Um, it's kind of clunky to use in my opinion, just because to you know it is a two link monster, and you're not running a lot of monsters in general on this deck, so. When you use it, basically, you would want to get rid of, like, an extra Marionetter and, like, an extra Moleseek, probably. But you would want another Marionetter on the field, um, basically underneath this card, because this card will gain the attack of whatever card it's pointing to with those arrows. So the your, hi your highest attack monster is going to be your Marionetter, so it'll gain 1600 attack, which puts it at 3100. Um, it also has an ability to where if they activate a spell trap, you can tribute the card that this card is pointing to and negate it. Um, so it's it's good, but it's kind of a heavy cost because then your attack goes back down to 1500, so use it wisely. Um, Prime Banshee, card I never really use. It's alright. So basically you contribute an Altergeist monster, special summon another Altergeist monster from your deck to, to a zone this card points to. Um, if it's sent to the graveyard, you can target an Altergeist monster in your graveyard and add it to your hand. 
you can only use the effect of each um, effect this card has once per turn. So you can special summon, and then it's kind of like you can recycle cards from your graveyard back to your hand. It's okay. I would just... It's a 3-link monster, so it's kind of heavy to bring out, and I would much rather just bring out Hexia. Um, I'm never really in a position to where I need it, but it's good to have just in case. Um, your standard Nightmare package, so you have Nightmare Cerebus, Nightmare Phoenix, Nightmare Unicorn. Then we're going to run 3-link Karibos, so that we just have the ability to send Mollusk to the graveyard, if ever we want to. Um, and it also will protect your life points, so like if you just get a shit hand, you have nothing. Um, then you have Ningirsu, so if you bring this card out, um, you can send one card from either player's field to the graveyard, and if this card is sent from the field to the graveyard, you can special summon a World Chalice monster from your hand. Um, it's not amazing, you really just kind of have it there for another body. Um, if you guys can think of anything else to add to this deck, um, in the context of this game, please let me know. This is kind of what I have so far. Um, it's very hard to kind of work around the ban list for this deck, um, but the deck is still functional and you can still have fun with it. Um, so let me know if there's things that you guys would like to change or if you have any questions. Um, you can always get a hold of me through the comments. Um, Alright, that covers this video. I'll see you guys next time.